Jupiter and Saturn and Bacchus and all the rest of them. Is it wrong to not worship government and do whatever it says? Was George Washington wrong to not do whatever King George III said and to let all the lords be exempt from taxes while levying high taxes on all their competition to destroy competition and consolidate the market? Are the Bundys wrong that 52 other ranching families that were there since 1877 were forced out because of government fines and fees being raised on record, federal court ruled last year to bankrupt them. Was it wrong to not roll over and die? Was it wrong to keep the cows on the land he had the grazing rights to? Is the Boston Globe correct last year when they said in the headline, so did the BBC had a similar article, is the Declaration of Independence terrorism? That's the headline. And the majority of lawyers said yes. It says you have a right and a duty to throw off a tyrannical government. And they said that's not true. They attacked the very basic uh, bedrock of our republic. And they said, no, you never have a right. So in China, where if uh, the government doesn't like you, they will cut your genitals off and throw you in the street... Uh, or will take you and steal your organs in a mobile execution van. If you're a new listener, just type in mobile execution van, folks, and you can pull that up. The big question and the big issue here is when the police beat old men to death because they feel like it in China and the public riots against the communist oppressors and uh, beats uh, the uh, police into bloody pulps, is that wrong? Is there ever a right to stand up? And, and, and the answer by Harry Reid is no. There is never a time to stand up. So here's the toll-free number for first-time callers. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And I will get you up and on the air. But, but specifically... Is there ever a time to stand up? Is there ever a time to say no? Is there, and of course, obviously, if you don't stand up, you will end up in a total tyranny. Submitting, laying down, groveling to the power grabs has brought us to the point we're at now where the system thinks we're so enslaved, so stupid, so pathetic, so bad that they have the nerve and they have the will to pass Obamacare bipartisanly that was written by offshore banks on record to massively increase the price of health care, lower the quality, bring government control death panels in, and raise seven taxes on people making as little as $14,000 a year. Cutting your hours from 40 down to 30 or less, just absolutely screwing you on every front. And folks, they passed it, and you notice they're not repealing it. Even though it's over 80% unpopular in national mainline polls, notice it's there to stay. And they're gonna pass more, they're gonna take your pensions, they're gonna take your social security, they're gonna take it in pieces, they're gonna take it all. And they're gonna devalue your currency, and the stock market will go up because you're buying the stocks in devalued dollars. But when it all is said and done, it, it is invincing a tyranny to absolutely destroy you. And remember, the architect of it came out and said, we plan to destroy the healthcare system. Ezekiel Emanuel, it's not even my opinion. And you've got all the zealots that work for the system who think they're on some winning team being part of this incredible dishonor. When you open the gates to tyranny, folks, it ends up robbing and screwing everyone and destroying the prosperity. And I know our audience knows that, but we have to get this out to everybody. Now, I want to get into this first. We covered this Friday and Sunday, but I want to get back into it now. This is Harry Reid saying that uh, the Bundy supporters are domestic terrorists. Here it is. So these people who hold themselves out to be patriots 
or not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. And I think that we are a country that people should follow the law. And what went up in Mesquite is not very good. I repeat, what went on up there is domestic tourism. Okay, They're domestic terrorism, not tourism. <laughs> And, of course, he went on in the full clip we played on Friday to, to say, you know, they had kids up front so they would get killed. Not true. Because they want kids to die. Like Oklahoma City where the feds bombed it and put the bomb right by the daycare center. Knowing they had images of dead kids, you mean like that? And that they were, you know, they're wanting to shoot the feds. No, they were there with their guns down at their side, the minority that had guns. And they marched across the line as the feds said, we will shoot you. And the feds backed off because they're not feds. They're mercenaries there to take over the West so that it can be removed from the American people's control to be handed over to globalists as collateral on the national debt. And that's all on record in the executive orders. But here's the deal. The 17, 18 trillion we really owe is a drop in the bucket compared to the 700 trillion of the 1.5 global quadrillion that the globalists have created. They're the people that created the debt. Iceland arrested their head banking minister and discovered 90 plus percent, it was like 93 percent, this was two years ago, was not owed by them. The 400,000 Icelanders were told, you each owe over a million pounds because their money was pegged to the pound. That's like a million and a half dollars or more in U.S. money. And the people just wouldn't pay it. And then they found out, wait, the government signed us on to all this debt that's not ours. And they arrested people. They arrested them. The name of the game is get people in debt, bankrupt them. So that's the big issue, ladies and gentlemen. Now continuing uh, here to Harry Reid, let's move on to Lisa Monaco who talks about, hey, if your kids are, are, are you know, acting out, uh, if your children, quote, are confrontational, that's a sign they may be terrorists. See, mom, dad, you can't even trust your children. You can trust one thing and one thing only, and that's the state. And then all the criminal interests that have their hands in the state. See, the state is only the apparatus through which the special interest are engaged in this takeover. I'm not even demonizing people that work for the state. The average police officer, the average teacher, the average bureaucrat, they're compartmentalized, given very narrow things that they can do. They're constrained. But they should leak things, not comply, really soul search which side they're on, and, and, and ask themselves, is helping the system come into being good, or do we want to reverse the path we're on? But the real onus is with us, we the people. What are we going to do? So let's go to this clip. Uh, White House counterterrorism chief, confrontational children could be terrorists. She said this on CBS News, uh, PBS News, and then she, uh, this particular clip, though, is from her Harvard speech where she said similar things. Here it is. So what kinds of behaviors are we talking about? For the most part, they're not related directly to actually plotting attacks. They're more subtle. Parents might see uh, sudden personality changes in their children at home, uh, becoming more confrontational than usual. Religious leaders might notice unexpected clashes over ideological differences. And teachers might hear students expressing an interest to travel to a conflict zone uh, overseas. Or friends might notice a new interest in watching or sharing violent material. The government is, of course, rarely in a position to observe these early signals. So we need to do more to help communities and community members understand the warning signs and then work together to intervene before something can occur. While always, and this is important, while always respecting our core commitment to protecting privacy and civil liberties. All of this is for naught if we don't have the trust in our communities um, between both the government uh, and the members of the community. All right. And uh, then shifting gears, uh, we have another clip here. This is Scalia, uh, Justice Scalia of the Supreme Court, talking about the TSA and NSA. 
Uh, here's that clip. That doesn't it follow that the U.S. government would not be able to justify its NSA surveillance program and that therefore conceivably could be in violation of the Constitution? No, because it's not absolute. As Ruth said, there are very few freedoms that are absolute. Oh. I mean, your, your person is protected by the Fourth Amendment, but as I pointed out, when you board a plane, somebody can, can pass his hands all over, your, all over your body. That's a terrible intrusion.